So what my parents actually used to do to strengthen my muraji'ah, they actually used to enter me in these Qur'an competitions. Iqra al-Qur'an, fa'innahu ya'ti yawm al-qiyamati shifi'a li ashabi. Recite the Qur'an as I will become a witness for you on yawm al-qiyamah. I actually finished my last verse around the Kaaba while doing tawaf around the Kaaba. Walahu al-kibiriya'u fi s-samawati wal-ard wa huwa al-aziz al-hakim. To him belongs the majesty of the heavens and the earth, and he's the all-wise. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome back to the Hif Status Podcast, episode 14, where we're joined with Sheikh Yunus Rahman, Qari Yunus Rahman, a very special guest for today's episode, insha'Allah ta'ala. Now, just before we read off a short bio of our guest for today, to insha'Allah ta'ala answer some of the questions that were sent in pertaining to the uh, initiative of Hif Status. Now, the Hif Status initiative was originally set up at the beginning of this year, at the end, towards the end of February, I believe where we recorded our first podcast uh, before we had the Instagram platform. Alhamdulillah, we started recording our podcast episodes and really ju- just trying to connect people with the idea that you can memorize the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you can delve into its sciences of tajweed, its qira'at, whilst also flourishing in terms of academics, in terms of study, in terms of career. And what better person to bring on than our guest for today, inshallah, Sheikh Yunus Rahman, who memorized Quran from a very young age. He competed in many different competitions around the UK, won many different competitions from a young age. Um, his parents, who aren't Hufar themselves, right? Raised him and his, his brother, his younger brother, to be... Um, Hufad of the Qur'an, not just only in Hafsa and Asim, but other riwayats such as, such as Warsh and Warsh and Nafi. Warsh and Nafi. And Asim as well. And Asim as well, mashallah. So that would be Hafsa and Shu'bah as well. Nah. Allahumma barik. So this is really, inshallah, this episode is really to, to inspire <coughs> and, and motivate those, not just from a young age, but also parents of, of uh, uh, aspiring Hufad or of children. Whether, they, whether, whether you have children, whether you're raising children, whether you're, inshallah ta'ala, going to have children in the future, how to go about doing that. And also for those who are on their journey, young and old, how to, inshallah ta'ala, flourish with your relationship in terms of your relationship with the Quran, with the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So without further delay, inshallah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's an honor for us to have you here today. It's an honor to be here as well in this podcast. Obviously with anyone's journey with the Quran, mm. What's most important to know is how did it start? What was the initial spark that caused all of it? Like you memorize the Quran at a young age, um, and also how you carried on that journey. Allahumma barik to your age now. You're 17 years old. I'm right? 17. Yes. Yeah, mashallah. Yes. Going on to your second year available. So. Yes, inshallah. So, inshallah, we want to get an insight into that. So, just tell us a little bit about how you, that spark, that initial spark with Hifth began. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. So in regards to my journey or my introduction to the Quran, it started at a very young age. So when I was about four years old, three years old. So I lived in a household where the Quran was being played everywhere. Alhamdulillah. When we went on car journeys, the Quran was always being played. I actually remember the first clip was, you know, the iconic clip Sheikh Abdul Basit Surah Duha. Mm. The iconic clip With his hand by his side nah, yeah. <laughs> That was iconic clip That was yeah. the first clip I remember So alhamdulillah I grew up in a household where the Quran was being recited Listened to various shiukh So when I was four years old My parents enrolled me into a weekend madrasa For two years For two years And during those two years I hardly me- My memorization wasn't that strong because when, of course, when you are young, your concentration levels you get distracted easily. So after those two years, my parents enrolled me. So when I was in year three, when I was about nine years old, my parents enrolled me into an evening madrasa. So this was after school. I went to a state school in year three. So after school, this was an even evening madrasa which started at five thirty and finished at seven thirty. And I remember after the first day. Uh, the Ustad, his name was Ustad Ahmed, may Allah preserve him He spoke to my dad and actually told him that I wasn't concentrating I was getting distracted And my dad took this feedback positively Because in the weekend madrasa there was no feedback 
they, my parents gained no insight of my progress, of how I was doing. Mm -hmm. So my dad took this feedback positively and the Ustad told my dad to sit with me. Mm -hmm. And that is initially when my memorization journey started. So at the evening madrasa, I memorized two juz, the juz 30 and juz 29. And mm -hmm. I did that with, I memorized that in a few months. And that's when the Ustad, he went to my dad again and told him that he saw potential in me. And my parents took this as a sign of Allah Jalla wa Ala, and therefore they, they discussed what they should do with me going forward. And I was at this evening madrasa, at madrasa for two years, for two years, and when I was nine years old, I actually left my state school to go to an Islamic school, you know, Al Mizan school. Mm -hmm. Part of Islam Mosque. Yeah, part of Islam Mosque, Al Mizan school. And that is when the journey, uh, memorization journey, got a bit more intense. Yeah. So, so when I was memorizing, uh, it was about one page. When I started, mm -hmm. it was about one page. Mm -hmm. Then gradually, it got to, uh, in the latter stages of my journey, I started to memorize about five pages. That was more, alhamdulillah. And and due to the commitment, hard work, and dedication, I managed to finish the Quran within a year, Al Mizan, alhamdulillah. So when you went to Al Mizan school, how much had you memorized before then? Two juz. Two juz. Two juz. And what I forgot to mention is that the two juz, it wasn't actually strong. I had to re memorize it all over again when I went to Al Mizan because mm. was, I was making a few mistakes. Mm. And the ahkam and tajweed, some letters I, I wasn't reciting properly. So I had to re memorize everything all over, all, all over again mm. when I went to Al Mizan. Mm. So that means you memorized 30 juz in one year? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So, how did that? How does that work out? I I didn't know that. Obviously, I've known you for a few years. I didn't know you. Thirty years in one year. How how are you man? How are you managing that? Uh, it's just the support of your parents. Allah. They invested so much time in me, and this is so important. Uh, a child needs the support from your parents because it just motivates you. And I remember there were some times when I was stuck on a verse for so long mm. and my dad used to just sit beside me and try to, and try and help me wow. memorize this verse and this is the support you need yeah. so it was through the support of my parents that I was able to finish as quick as I did alhamdulillah so take us through like a day a day to day sort of your life at that time memorize, memorizing 30 years no. I, I, would, I would imagine that your whole day would just be full of Quran reciting over and over how did that work? so the school, the primary school, of course the main focus of this school was of course the Hidh. Mm. So there were two periods and they were like a very long, three hours long. Mm. So what I forgot to mention, the school day starts at 7.45 and finishes at 4.30. Oh. So it was a pretty long day, very long day. Yeah, much longer than the state school. Yeah, yeah. For state schools I think 9 a.m. to 3.30, but three, this yeah. school 7.45 to 4.30. It's very long. Especially at a young age, you said you were nine years old. Uh, when, yeah, I started at 9 and I finished at 10. What made you do that? What made you think to yourself that you can even do 30 years in one year? Mm, it's just dedication. Mm. You just need to be dedicated. Yeah. You need to put your whole mind, you yeah. need to put your heart to it. You need to put your heart and soul to it. Yeah. And once you have the correct intention, you're reciting it for Allah Jalla wa Ala, only for only His sake. And once you have the intention, once you have the intention, you're reciting it for Allah, everything will become easy. Mm everything will become easier and that is what uh, made me finish quickly would you say that from a young age you found it easy mm. to reach like you know recite in a melodious way mm. or would you say that took some developing on your side you used to practice you used to listen in a certain way mm. how did you go about doing that in my case it was just listening i used to listen a lot to a lot of various qurra mm. different qurra for example uh sheikh sudais mm. sheikh mahir sheikh yasir mm -hmm. and uh, even like you know, Mujawad recited Sheikh Min Shawi, yeah. Sheikh Abdul Bas, Sheikh Khosari. Mm. And when I was young, I used to try and imitate all these different Qur'an. Yeah. And because I was imitating these different Qur'an, uh, just a melody just developed, alhamdulillah. Yeah. What was your preferred recital when you were younger, ya Sheikh Yasir al-Dusari? Like, actually, this was a real, Yasir al-Dusari is actually a funny story to this. <laughs> so it's during Umrah, yeah. during Umrah on the TV, mm. the, do you know when they have... Um, the live broadcast. Yeah, yeah, from uh, the Haramain, yeah. yeah, those uh, reciter, he's reciting, mm -hmm. And he was reciting this verse in such a nice, like, when I heard it, I was like, wow. Yeah. I was mesmerized by it. It was so amazing. Yeah. I was trying to research who this sheikh was. Mm -hmm. 
because I know they have the names in Arabic on the bottom. Yeah. And I, I, don't, I couldn't understand it. I don't know why I didn't oh, you read, didn't read it. The Arabic. Yeah, I couldn't read it. <laughs> so I was trying to research who this Sheikh was. Yeah. And one time when I was at home, uh, there was live Tarawi broadcast. This was Sheikh Yasser al Dusari's debut year, 2016. His ah, debut year leading in the Haram. Yeah. And when I heard this, I was thinking, oh, that's the same Sheikh. Uh, that's the shame Sheikh I listened to yeah. And the funny story Later on in my life I realised You know the Sheikh I initially listened to In um, Mecca mm. In the live broadcast yeah. In Umrah It was actually Sheikh Nasr al-Qatami Because uh, they have similar they voices similar, Yeah similar, Very yeah. similar voices yeah. But when I heard Sheikh, Sheikh Yasir al-Dusari I just started to imitate him mm. and Alhamdulillah Such an amazing reciter His yeah. old recitations especially And did you used to Did you used to like copy him Actively like listen to him yeah, on a yeah. daily basis. Yeah, I still do. I still yeah. do. When I go to school, when I have free periods, I just put yeah. my AirPods and I just listen to it. So, did you find that was the best way to improve your voice? Yeah, I think so. That was for listening was the best way because mm. it helped me. Because I used to imitate of the Quran. I found it easy to imitate yeah. this yeah. Quran, and yeah, listening was what a key uh, mm. way to help me. So, for those who want to improve their voice. Would you, apart from obviously you'd recommend listening. Mm. What recitals would you recommend listening to? This here has to be for melody is a thing that should come after. Mm. The thing that we should focus on is ahkam and tajweed. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in a hadith narrated by Abu Lubaba, "Laysa minna man lam yataghna bil Quran." He is not one of us who does not recite the Quran in a pleasant voice. This doesn't mean or oh, because I, ha- I don't have a nice voice I can't recite the Quran. No, this means that. W- if we recite the Quran with the ahkam and tajweed, that's perfect. Awzida alayhi wa ratilil Quran tartila. Recite the Quran in a, a slow paced manner. Well, I would prefer someone who recites the Quran in a normal voice and recites in the correct ahkam and tajweed compared to someone who has, mashallah, Allah jalla wa ala, bless him with an amazing voice but with no tajweed. Yes. And tajweed, of course, is sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They recited the Quran with the ahkam and tajweed. So, if that is my advice. That's so, on, so true, yeah. subhanAllah. And off the back of that, that story that you mentioned about Sheikh Yasser al Dossali, ah. do you remember the first time we met? Yes, in the retreat. Yeah, you Yeah, in there, the yeah? retreat, yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'll say a funny story for those, who are, for those who are watching in terms of how we met. So we met in a retreat about five, six years ago. It was, it was February 2018. Wow, yeah, yeah. February, February 2018, 2018, yeah. yeah. So what's that? That's four, four, more than four years ago. Wow. SubhanAllah. Wow. Yeah, we yeah. were really. I remember I was young, you were young. Yeah. I think you were like in GCSE. Yeah. Mm. And then you were obviously like much younger as well. <laughs> so we met at that retreat, mm. but we didn't know each other before that retreat. Yeah, yeah, so obviously there was like a lot of other people yeah. at that retreat. It was like a, just on the outs- outskirts of London, I think. Yeah, like. yeah. So there was like everyone's network, everyone's meeting new mm. brothers and stuff. No. And then we, I think we played like one of those icebreaker games. Yeah, you yeah. know, really young, we were playing like dodgeball or something. Yeah. And then. Uh, one of the brothers, he was one of the, uh, the brothers who was like the leader of the of the sort of event and stuff. He was no. leading it all. He was looking for someone, one of the younger younger lot to lead Maghrib Salah. No. Obviously, as a form of encouragement to get someone young to lead. And he was asking him, who wants to lead Maghrib Salah? Da, 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 da. And I recognize you. I actually said salam to you. I remember, I remember saying I remember, yeah, yeah. I remember. Uh, you know where I recognize you from? I recognize you from, I believe you led once in Isla Mosque. Yeah. A really young. And I recognise you from the recitation on YouTube. That's all. And I connected you to, and I and I've noticed when you recite, you sound exactly like yourself. Yes, it does. So I said, so I I pulled the brother to the side. I said, listen, you're trying to find someone to lead Maghrib. Tell him to lead Maghrib. Yeah. <laughs> so he he was like, really? And I was like, because obviously you look really young and stuff like yeah. that. We were we were young. Yeah, we were. Yeah. So he was like, okay. And I said, please tell him to lead Maghrib. So he said, okay. So he said, please lead Maghrib. So you led Maghrib Salah. I think I've got the recording on my phone of you leading. You read Surah Tu? Do you remember the Surah you read? Uh, surah Zumar? Surah Tul Ghafir. 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 Yeah, 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 exactly. And I remember as well, after the Salah finished, because mm. obviously it's shocking to hear a young boy recite so similar to Sheikh Yasser Dossari. Inshallah, I'm going to actually put the recording up in the middle of this podcast just so people can see. You, How old are you? Like 12? 11, 12? 12. 2018, I was in year 8. So 12. Yeah, 12. 12. Yeah, yeah, you're 12, 12 years old. So... 
I remember afterwards what they done was I think they made you lead Aisha as well and the next day we had like so they were going through a booklet and it was a verse of Surah An-Nur. Nam, nam, yes. And they got you yes, at the front yes. and they got you to recite all yeah. the verses. <laughs> so that was our first. And after that I think we we didn't see each other for a while. It was yeah. Yeah, and I was, think the next time was it Sheikh Jamal's class? I think it was Sheikh Jamal's class. Yeah. yeah. Nice memory. A very good memory. Years fly by quick in it. Oh, can't believe and obviously, I didn't know your Quran journey until now. Mm. And you saying that, obviously, in take us to the time where you were, you know, memorizing and, you know, imitating and developing your voice and developing. Were there any, like, points when you were memorizing and you got really stuck on a certain surah? What surah was it? How mm. did you overcome that? Mm. So, during my memorization journey, there were some verses I was stuck on for hours. Yeah. For the long verses. Yeah. The more longer verses I was stuck on, for example. And even surah Safat as well. Do you know, because they have shorter verses. <laughs> And there's mutashabihat, for example, Salamun ala Ibrahim, Salamun ala Ilyasin, Salamun ala Nuhim fil alameen. I always got mixed up. Inna kadhali kanajid muhsin. All these mutashabihat. That's the small surahs. Everyone thinks, oh, they're so easy. But when you actually tackle them, like, oh, it's actually very hard. What techniques were you using to, mm. to memorize those verses? Of? So at the start of my journey, the technique I used was to make sure, this was at the very start. Yeah. So to make sure you're pronouncing the letters properly. Yeah. So for example, Alhamdu. So Alhamdu, make the haqli, not ha. Mm. So for example, like this. Yeah. Then after I had this stage mastered, I would move on to the next stage. So move, um, make sure I'm pronouncing the word properly. Yeah. So the whole phrase, Alhamdulillah. Mm. So I, and once I had this stage mastered, make sure I can pronounce the whole word properly. Yeah. And once this was perfect, that's when I would repeat it 10 times. Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah, Allah Jalla wa allowed me to only repeat about 10 times and it would just become stored in my memory, alhamdulillah. So once I would uh, I would repeat this ayah 10 times and once I had it solidified, I would move on to ayah number 2, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. And I would, the same procedure would continue, repeat the verse 10 times and I would go back to verse number 1 and verse number 2 and recite them both together. Then yeah. you go verse number 3. Solidify, use the same procedure, repeat the verse 10 times, then go back to verse number 1, 2 and 3, then this is how the cycle continued. And there was a portion of my journey, a small portion, when I actually used the device. I'm not sure if you have a school Quran pen. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah yes. And wallahi, I loved that, that was the best. So you put it over the verse and it reads it Yeah, out yeah. Out. It was so, it's such a fun way yeah. to memorize the Quran. Yeah. And I remember, there were some times when my parents were sleeping and I just used to go to the wardrobe and just memorize just on my own. Yeah. And that was so beneficial for me because uh, sometimes my dad, he may have been busy. He, may, my parents may have been busy. They won't have time to take my lesson, yeah. and I just do it on my own. And when my dad becomes available, available, I can just give the lesson yeah, to him. Yeah. And that's why I loved um, using the Quran pen. It was such a fun, innovative way to yeah. learn the Quran. And for example, it had like a word for word setting, so it helped me with complex word complex words like anul zimukumuha thum malatu nabbaunna. You know those tongue twisting words. Yeah. And just. Uh, and that word for it, if you click on it, it just so clearly. One thing though, when you are, when you're young, huh. aren't you distracted by computer games? Aren't you distracted mm. by, you know, I don't know what they do, watching football? <laughs> aren't, you, aren't you distracted by that stuff? When I was younger, I, really, I didn't really have like a console. Mm. I didn't really have mm. a console when I was younger. Yes. I didn't have a phone because yes. I was young. Yeah. It was just... Uh, well, TV, I didn't really watch. We have TV, but I didn't really watch it. Mm. It was just Quran. Mm. Just, I remember it's, sometimes it took like four hours in Quran, so I have no time. Because mm. when you come back from school, when I came back from school, 4.30, just half an hour rest till 5 o'clock, and sometimes I'm there for so long, I have no time yeah. to do all the other yeah. um, stuff of dunya, mm. you see. But your parents didn't buy a console? Uh, like they didn't buy one only till later, later. only till after I finished exactly yeah. that's the key yeah no, like, exactly. it's like a gift kind of thing they yeah. bought it for me as a gift and you earned it isn't it <laughs> my parents only bought me a phone yeah. after my GCSEs because that, after my GCSEs that's when I was because you, obviously you're on that break yeah, isn't it yeah, yeah. And, and I was obviously going out like playing football they need to keep in yeah they need yeah. to keep in contact that's when they bought me a phone and before I didn't have a phone I only had like iPad iPad you can't really do anything you just play games on it yeah yeah. yeah, and and when you finish memorization, what makes you unique, uh, Allahumma barik, from a lot of the guests that have come on before, is you've competed in many Quran competitions. When you memorize, what was the gap between when you first competed, 
how did that competition start and how did you solidify your Quran huh. for competition level? So what my parents actually used to do to strengthen my murajia, they actually used to enter me in these Quran competitions. Okay. So the first competition I remember entering was your national Qur'a competition on Islam channel. This was the first competition I entered. And this was such a good competition because not only does it focus on Qira'ah, we, all, we also have to like say a khutbah as well. So this, of course, boosts our confidence in public speaking as well. Because it was a national television That's and doing a khutbah. Yeah, it's very good as well. And there was sometimes you have to recite a dua as well. Those uh, segments where you have to... Um, sometimes you recite mujawad. So it had everything in it. And one of the judges, his name is Sheikh Mahmoud Atiyah. May Allah rahmahullah, may Allah preserve him. He actually spoke to my dad and told him that he wants me to lead Tarawih in his local masjid. This was 2016. So this competition, I forgot to mention, it had a time span of six months. It started in February and f- finished in like June. Yeah, before Ramadan, because I think it's 2016, Ramadan was in end of June. Yeah. End of June. So before Ramadan, the competition finished. So Alhamdulillah, I managed to do well in that competition. And Sheikh Mahmoud, he spoke to my dad and told him that uh, he wants me to lead Tarawih in his local masjid. So th- from that national Qur'a competition, that's when how my Tarawih journey started. And Alhamdulillah, Tarawih went well. It was a fantastic experience, you know, the first year. And after Ramadan had ended, the Sheikh Mahmoud, he actually recommended my name to another Sheikh Mahmoud. And he recommended my name to represent the UK in the King Abdul Aziz competition in Saudi Arabia. That's, you see, from national Qur'a competition, look at... Yeah, look how competition opened doors for you to yeah. amazing opportunities. Yeah. And so we went to like a office. So this was called a da'wah office where the shuyukh, they tested you. And this was to get into the King Abdul Aziz competition. Yeah. I remember just entering. It was pretty daunting at first. It was like a big meeting table. <laughs> and there was a sheikh there, sheikh sitting there and sheikh sitting there. And they tested me on three questions. And I don't remember remember them now, but I remember the last question. Mm. The Sheikh asked me, What surah is this first? In Qala Rabbul Mashriqi wal Maghribi wa ma bainahuma in kuntum ta'kilun. Of course, I said Surah to Shu'ara. No. And with that, it, I went home. And of course, when I went home, I was thinking, Oh, I probably didn't get in. There's probably many other people, uh, many other Huffad going for the same role. And I'm young, so the probability of me going is probably not likely. So a week went by, a week or two went by. So I come home after school mm. and my dad told me, you're in, you're, you're in Saudi, you're going Saudi, I was like, wow. you're going Umrah. I was, I was like, wow, are you sure? Yeah. I was, uh, at the time I was overwhelmed, I didn't realise I was actually didn't going, it. yeah, I didn't expect it. Mm. And it was such an amazing experience. I remember thinking, what am I going to do, how am I going to prepare? I entered for 30 Jews. Mm. Um, yeah. And this, the worst thing, it was during school time. I was in year eight, it was during school time. And I was thinking, it was the head teacher going to let me go? Yeah. I'm missing two weeks of education so alhamdulillah the head teacher actually did let me go he had to have a meeting and after that i remember the head teacher what he said to me is that you better win this competition (laughs) i remember the head teacher said that and the day we flew out was 3rd of october 2017 and the reason why i remember i remember this day because it was actually my birthday so it was a a good day you just turned i just turned 13 13 so it was a good day alhamdulillah we went to the airport we went to the airport and wallahi the whole airport was empty because normally in Umrah yeah. we see the whole airport packed yeah. and what I remember October is, is not Umrah season the Umrah season starts in like February time yeah. December time so I thought the flight was delayed or something I was yeah. like oh, there's no one there and we entered the plane oh, empty plane I was like are you sure the flight is like delayed Alhamdulillah such an amazing experience and we got to Jeddah airport and we met a sheikh from Bahrain he was going to guide us, he was going to take us to the hotel, perform Umrah with us. And I made one of the biggest mistakes of my life. He asked me to recite, and I didn't recite. I don't know why, I don't know if I was jet lagged or tired. He asked me to recite, and I know if I recited, he would have given me some beneficial advice to take before, to take on before, before, the, competition. before the competition. Mm. Wallah, I still, to this day, I think, why didn't I, just, I could have just recited. Oh. Surah Fatiha even. Yeah. I know well, you, you would just, have been. You just said, uh, yeah. Well. I, 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 at the time I was tired. It was about yeah, 10 pm, that's why. Yeah, yeah. And a long journey as well. Yeah, but you're young, even you're then, tired, you're yeah. But even then, I should have. Yeah. I, I know if I went now, I would have still recited yeah, to him. Yeah, yeah. So was he, one, he wasn't one of the judges, was he? No, like, he was just a sheikh from Bahrain, okay, but a big yeah. sheikh from Bahrain. He was the one that was going to take you to the competition, yeah. see you around. Okay. Yeah. So he performed Umrah, mm. and Umrah, it was, 
It was like no one was there. Tawaf normally is like fully packed up, and this time no one was there. Alhamdulillah, I managed to touch the Kaaba. Wow. I've never, I've normally, I've been Umrah five times, and that's the only time I managed to like touch it without, you know, like the big crowd. And yeah, day one was just Umrah, just like freshening up, preparing yeah. for the competition, and that was the day two, was the day of the preliminary rounds. So you had to uh, participate in this round. If you didn't participate, no, sorry, if you didn't, um, if you don't go through the preliminary rounds, you won't be able to participate in the final. Okay. So you have to go through this round in order to take part in the main competition that will happen in the haram. In the haram. In the haram. Now. It was in the new expansion, King Abdullah Gate. It was in the wow. new area of the haram. Wow. Yeah. So how did that go? So do you know we didn't know about the preliminary runs till last minute? They told us on the morning, it was in the morning and they told us because of course language barrier mm. That's the main problem mm. isn't it? Mm. And they told us in the morning, oh there's going to be a preliminary round If you don't go through you won't be able to participate in the competition of. And of course I was like stressing out, I didn't prepare anything yeah. I didn't be in the mindset but Yeah, <laughs> I wasn't in the mindset and, <laughs> and the worst thing was I was the first one there Because I just entered the room <laughs> The judge was sat down I just oh. entered the room And they just told me to come I was like What was happening? No way Yeah So you f- recited first? Yeah I recited first That is nerve Yeah Wow And this is not even the main uh, competition This is just yeah. uh, a round that's happening in the hotel lobby yeah. So and you were told last minute And then yeah. you came in You were the yeah. only one who recited first <laughs> And I remember you, what you had to do is you have to go to one of the organizers who has a slip, like an envelope, and those he has the questions in it, and you give that to the judge. And the judge, I remember, السؤال الأول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم قل إنما أعذكم بواحدة. You make me nervous, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I remember just reciting that <laughs> to John Surah Fatir. يا أيها الناس ذكروا نعمة الله عليكم. الحمد لله. I made no mistakes on that. Okay. And after the preliminary rounds, you have to go to like an office which they tell you if you made it through or not. Alhamdulillah, I made it through. And Zero mistakes. I forgot what the... I, I think I made one, but I forgot what the other question... I only re- remember that question. How many questions did they ask? Three, I think. Three, three. questions. Yeah. Sure. And they're testing like, did you read your... Nah, yeah. yeah. So you made it through that round. Alhamdulillah. Did it tell you on the day itself or... Uh, we didn't know at the time We didn't know So we had to go to like an office It was in the basement floor of the hotel It was like an office And they told you Whether you know whether or not you made it and Alhamdulillah I made it And it was just The second day just preparing mm. My dad testing me And just being like, Just seeing everyone in general Just seeing everyone recite the Quran The same Quran From everyone across the globe Reciting the same Quran You know A book with no faults or deficiencies The Quran is a book which has no doubts a guidance for those who are conscious Allah Jalla wa ala. And yeah There was like a list as well There was a list of the participants There was a list of the participants And my name was the last one So the competition was Saturday, Sunday, Monday My name was Monday, the last one Yeah, It was just preparation I was just preparing Reciting to my dad the, He used to just test me from anywhere And the biggest mistake we made We didn't know is that everyone from different countries, every participant, they had their teacher with them. And I didn't have my wow. teacher with me. Yeah, that would have helped. Yeah, that would have helped a lot. Wow, so okay. every participant had their teacher with them. Mm. So I was thinking, wow, inshallah, hope, hopefully I do well. And on the day, on Monday, on the day of the of my competition, my day, um, we went to one of the organizers and we told them when should we go because my name was was the last one and the language barrier here again they told us to go after Asr time and my turn was after Aisha so when I went yeah when I went I was waiting there for like four hours so of course I got a bit frustrated like when when's my turn I just want to <laughs> yeah, recite it yeah. and I remember when it came to my turn I was a bit tired of course mm. because I was waiting there for such a long time and I was doing last minute preparation and but alhamdulillah it went well the first question went well سؤال الأول قل من كان عدوا لجبريل فإنه نزله and this على قلبك بإذن الله مصدقا لما بين يديه وهدى وبشرى للمؤمنين إلى تو ولو أنهم آمنوا واتقوا لما ثوبة من عند الله خير لو كانوا يعلمون نعم this is a hasp book first question when when الحمد لله the second question وحسبوا ألا تكون سوري لقد أخذنا ميثاق بني إسرائيل وأرسلنا إليهم رسلا سورة المائدة نعم تو 
قل أتعبدون من دون الله ما لا يملك لكم ضرا ولا نفعا والله سمع so every question was about one page long so a third question السؤال الثالث أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وقد مكر الذين من قبلهم فلله المكر جميعا تو ولقد أرسلنا موسى بآياتنا أن أخرج قومك من الظلمات إلى النور سورة إبراهيم سورة الرعد the end of سورة الرعد to the beginning of سورة إبراهيم and there were five questions so question number four سورة الصاد وهل أتاك نبأ الخصم إذ تسوروا المحراب to inna alladhina yadilloon an sabiillillahi lahum adhabun shadid bima nasu yawm al-hisab so alhamdulillah those four questions no mistakes no mistakes alhamdulillah but the fifth question min bidayati surat al-zukhruf the start of surat al-zukhruf hamim al-kitab al-mubin inna ja'alnahu qur'anan arabiyyan la'allakum ta'khiloon and the verse continued wa innahu fi umu al-kitab ladayna la'aliyun hakim afa nadribu ankum al-dhikra safhan an kuntum qawman musrifin wa kam arsana wa kam arsalna min nabiyin fi al-awalin wa ma ya'tihim min nabiyin illa kanu bihi yastahziyun fa ahlakna ashada minhum batsha I just completely forgot that yeah my mind went back because I think I said kathalika naslukuhu fi gulub al-mujrimi because it's mutashabiyan surat al-hijr isn't it yeah and of course the uh, judge corrected me for ahlak there's like a buzzer yeah, they yeah the bill for ahlak na ashadda minhum batsha i remember at the time because i was so like think i got started when the bell i was like, i just started mm-hmm. i got started when he rang the bell yeah, cuz you mean the flow and yeah, yeah yeah and he told for ahlak na ashadda minhum batsha and <laughs> I made the mistake on the most easiest like subhanallah the sakhara lana hadha wa ma kunna lahum wa inna ila rabbina la munqalibun i said munqalibun i think i don't know what happened i think yeah. it's just the nerves that got to no, me because no. it's such an easy verse yeah, and yeah. I, i normally recite this so when you're traveling you recite this verse. yeah, of course the dark, yeah. yeah. but that's it should, goes to show like anything could happen yeah. and it goes to show that these competitions help you uh, remember your mistakes and now i'll always rem- i will always remember this for the rest of my life i'll always remember that so true, so true. yeah and just that's why i would recommend for brothers and sisters memorizing on memorizing the quran and embarking on this journey they should enter quran competition mm-hmm. because it boosts your confidence and it opens doors to new opportunities in my case look what just stemmed from entering a national Qur'an competition. My Tarawi journey started from entering this national comp- competition yeah. and um, representing UK internationally stemmed from being in a national yeah. Qur'an competition. Yeah. Yeah. That is why I would suggest, I would recommend mm. entering competitions. Nah. How was the process of strengthening your hifth before the competition started? Once you memorised, because you memorised in a year, some people say, your hifth must have been really weak. Was that the case or...? At the start, it was very weak. It, it was there were some surahs which I found very challenging. For example, Surah Al-Araf. Yeah. I found that I found that surah very, very challenging. Very challenging. Lot of mutashabihat. Lot, lot, lot of mutashabihat. That's what confused me. I remember it was during Al-Mizan. It was for my revision. You know, there's a new lesson previous and revision. And yeah. revision, I had Surah Al-Araf. I was stuck on that surah for like a month. Mm. Surah Al-Araf for like a month. It was so hard, I remember. Sometimes I, was, I got a bit upset. Sometimes I started crying because mm. it was so hard. Why can't I just finish the surah? Why can't I recite it? Yeah. It's like without making any mistakes. And yeah, there was some, uh, some like, times when I was stuck on verses, as I mentioned. Mm. And there was a story I have when in Umrah. I was stuck on a verse, you know, وَإِذَا كُنْتَ فِيهِمْ فَأَقُمْتَ لَهُمُ الصَّلَاةِ Surah al Because it's a long verse, I was stuck on that verse for such a, for a very long time. Ah, oh, yeah, that's yeah, a bit for, Yeah, so for... Allah, if it's a minimum, right now. There's these mutashabihat as well. And there was actually a, a brother, he was, he was in the haram as well. There was a brother, he was sat behind me, and I didn't know. He, I think he was listening to me for that whole time. And when he saw me struggling, like, I'm getting a bit... Upset mm. He actually came over to me And helped me Recite the verse Memorize the verse Alhamdulillah And What motivated me What I forgot to mention During the uh, In regards to the King Abdul Aziz competition Is that uh, The ceremony was actually Sheikh Sudais was there Sheikh Sudais actually Yeah He was actually there And he gave a speech Those Quran recitations as well That's what I forgot to mention as well and he came to and he asked me and sorry he asked me a question saying who do you want to meet and i was like and i said sheikh sudais because at the time he was my favorite sheikh wow. and he told me it was motivational but he told me 
the kings of the world, the king of the world won't meet Sheikh Sudais, but if you are half of the Quran, he will meet you. And such a miracle. And many years went by, and Alhamdulillah, I was in the same room as Sheikh Sudais. Alhamdulillah. So, so in regards to the competition, like how did you perform in comparison to other competitors that came? I think the other competitors they had very strong muraja. Yeah. The muraja was so strong. Yeah. Like, no mistakes, flawless. The recitation is crisp, clear. Uh, Bangladesh actually won. Bangladesh really? actually won. Wow. So I'm, I take it as well. <laughs> <laughs> go for it, go yeah. for it. <laughs> Bangladesh actually won. I remember the oh, recital. Yeah. Flawless, wow. ever crisp. Yeah. Just, his recita- rec- recitation as well, it was just normal. Yeah. Like, Salbani Israel, that's what he read. It was just normal, just plain recitation. But he had ahkam and tajweed. And that is what, that's what the judges look for. They don't look for the melody. Melody comes later. They look for ahkam and tajweed. And how, how old was this uh, brother from Bangladesh that won? I think at the time he was seven, 17, I think. Okay, mashallah. Yeah. So what was like the oldest age and what was like the youngest? The youngest, I, I was the youngest. I oh, think, wow. yeah, I was the youngest. 12 years old. I was the oldest one. I think he was from Egypt, 25 years old. Wow. I think so, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, Egypt. Egypt had the oldest contestants. Yeah. But like you said, a great experience. Yeah, fantastic experience. It, was, it will be an experience that I will cherish for the rest of my life. No. No. In terms of, in regards to advice for the Hufa that are watching who want to pursue Ijazat, mm. if I'm not mistaken, you gained an Ijazat under Sheikh Shu'aib Ali. La Sheikh Jalal. Sheikh Jalal. Sheikh Jalal. And Sheikh Ashik Rahman. Sheikh Ashik Rahman. Yeah. Allahumma barak. MashaAllah. So, how was that? Because I know a Sheikh who recited to Sheikh Jalal. And I know Sheikh Jalal, if you try and recite to him, he doesn't take any student. He's very strict. Mm, he's like very he strict. Yeah. And he's also firm very but busy. fair. Yeah, firm but fair. And he's also very busy as well, yeah, subhanAllah. Yeah. I know he's teaching all the time. So, how did, how did you meet Sheikh Jalal? And, so, uh, yeah. so, this was after my journey. After I finished memorizing the Quran, so year seven time, yeah. when I was in year seven, my dad wanted to look for the best teachers in the UK. So we went to Imam Shatabi Institute in Al Muntada, mm. a very famous, mm. one of the prestigious institutes, yeah. isn't it? No. Prestigious institute. Very prestigious, yeah. yeah. And he has all the, at the time, he had all the fantastic teachers like Sheikh Shu'aib, Sheikh Ayaz, Sheikh Jalal, Sheikh Musa Abu Zaghle, no. Sheikh Tamir Saeed, no. all these fantastic, no. um, amazing teachers. No. And we went to Sheikh Jalal. No, we saw, we went to Sheikh Amr first. Sheikh Amr. Mm-hmm. Because Sheikh Jalal was so high, he was so busy. I had to wait two yeah. years. Wow. I had to wait two years to wow. recite to Sheikh uh, Jalal. So with Sheikh Amr, I was just going over, just revision, just revising with him. Yeah. Yeah. And after two years, Alhamdulillah, I managed to start my ijazah in Asim with Sheikh Jalal. Mm-hmm. So the first time it was pretty tough. Mm-hmm. I couldn't get past Surah Fatiha. It was that tough. Wow. So it was very tough. He's very yeah. strict, isn't it? Very strict. He's very humble, Sheikh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very down to earth as well. He's on, he's on uh, obviously, for those that are, are watching, who is Sheikh Jalal? Would you be able to like kind of give a background? Who, so? mm, Sheikh Jalal, from what I know, he's the professor, if I'm not mistaken, mm-hmm. of Al Azhar University. Mm-hmm. And he he's very p- well known, yeah. very prominent reciter. Yeah. He's got Ijazah in all ten qira'a. Yeah. And um, he currently. Yeah, I think he's from Birmingham now. Yeah, he lives in yeah. Birmingham. And he's still teaching. Yeah. And yeah, I, I don't know anymore. And the Imam Shatabi Institute. No. Nah. And the dean of the dean of Imam Shatabi Institute is is the Sheikh Masalawi and Sheikh Abdul nah, nah. Sufi. No. Nah. So obviously some of the most some mm. of the giants in terms yeah, of, of in terms of Sheikh Quran. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And Sheikh Shuaib, Sheikh Masalawi student, Sheikh Shuaib in the Imam Shatabi yeah. Institute. No. Nah. So at first with Sheikh Amr, he wasn't. As good because sometimes I used to lose concentration and sometimes I got disrupted a bit easily. Mm. So the first cycle with Sheikh Amr, it wasn't as good, so I had to repeat it again. Okay. The second time I was fully committed, mm. I put my head down and I revised. And I rev- this was just normal revision, yeah, hafs, yeah. and I, w- I managed to recite to him, um, Alhamdulillah, Sheikh Amr. Mm-hmm. So thereafter, um, after two years, Sheikh Jalal. So this was, it was tough, it was very tough. The first yeah. one was so tough. Because in Shu'ba, there's hardly any ikhtilafat. Ra'uf al-Rahim, li Jabra'il. I think li Jabra'il is the, like, I mean, yeah, who's the, it's very little um, uh, differences. 
But I remember the first time, even then, what the teachers used to do yeah. is after the first, after you recite the first time, you have to recite a second time to, of yeah. course, solidify. Because an ijaza is, of course, a big responsibility. So it's yeah. your name linked to Allah Jalla wa'ala, yeah. linked to Rabbul Alameen. So, of course, it's a big responsibility. And the first time, sometimes I used to use, lose concentration. And yeah, and it wasn't as strong because, of course, I wasn't used to the ikhtilafat. When you recite the first time a new riwayah, you're not used to the ikhtilafat yeah. and usul. But when you recite the second time, you are more familiar with the usul and ikhtilafat. Yeah. So the second time, alhamdulillah, I managed to attain ijazah in Asim. And at the ceremony, Sheikh Masara and Sheikh Abdul Rashid Sufi were attending. They wow. actually attended. So it was amazing. 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 How old were you when you gained first ijazah? I was yeah, 40, 14, 14. Mm. Yeah, 14. Allah barik. And what would your advice be to those who are pursuing ijazat? Would you say, you know, as soon as you finish your hifth, pursue one? What would your advice be in that regard? The first advice, of course, strengthen your hifth. Because ijazah, you can't enter ijazah with like making loads of mistakes. Yeah. You have to enter ijazah already with already solidified revision. Your revision has to be at a point where you're hardly making any mistakes. Yeah. And that is and that is the best way. Mm. So the advice after Hiv just solidify your vision mm. and once you do that you can pursue Ijaza. Mm. On the topic of Ijaza, how was that feeling of gaining, of finishing, of completing under the teacher? How was that experience? Alhamdulillah it was it was an amazing experience. Because I remember when I finished the final three surahs, Qul Hu Allah wa had Allah you have to uh, carry on uh, Fatiha and the yeah, five, five verse of Baqarah When I finished I started I was so happy Yeah So happy After two years After four years Sorry all together Wow Yeah four years Because so two years, two years with Sheikh Amr And for, uh, two more years with Sheikh Jalal So after four years Alhamdulillah I managed to gain the ijazah mm -hmm. And it was it was like in a big frame mm -hmm. And the Sheikh Jalal His teacher And his teacher And his teacher All the way to Allah Jalla wa ala. And just Just looking back on it It's, it's an amazing memory isn't it mm -hmm. Amazing memory how often were you reading to the Sheikh Jalal? Every Sunday, so because I live very far away, every morning 9 a.m. was my lesson, one hour there, and one hour back. It was a very long journey, but it was a nice journey. I actually loved that journey, that one hour journey, because mm. like, early morning you're just reciting Quran. Such a nice journey. Mm. I remember that. No, that's, that's. And in regards to, so like, let's bring it back to. Obviously, we focus a lot on like the initial stages. Um, those years before and your, your connection with the Qur'an what does your current day to day life look like, look like now with the, in terms of the Qur'an and balancing your A-levels for example so my current day to day life what it looks like no. um, I come back from school no. then for about four hours no. I just do revision school revision homework uh, um, A-levels yeah. A-level just revision and then in the night the night that's when before I go sleep that's when I recite, revise, sorry, free juz by myself. Free juz, okay. I just re revise. It takes about an hour because one juz 20, 20, 20. Yeah. So free juz takes about an hour. So it's very easy, alhamdulillah. Once you get, you're used to it, it just becomes easy for you, yeah. alhamdulillah. And there are many hafaz who like to, who prefer to revise at fajr time because, of course, the memory is free. There's nothing to think about. Mm. But if you think about it this way, it's pretty deep as well. If you go to sleep, imagine you don't wake up. Imagine Allah Jalla takes your soul away. The last action you did was reciting the Quran, mm. and that that is why I prefer to revise it during the night before I go sleep. No. And I still study with my teachers. That's why teachers are very important. You, it's, uh, was, it's essential that we have teachers. Yeah. Because if you don't have teachers, it's very dangerous. Because you don't know what your mistakes are. Yeah. There could be some mistakes where you could be changing the meaning. That's why even Sheikh Jamal, even during his class, sometimes he says that, oh, you need to have a teacher who's qualified, he knows what he's doing. Yes, yeah. well, definitely. From your experience, how have you found it also branching out and reciting to many other shiukh? And obviously taking advice from your main shaykh, but how, how, how did you find it reciting to other mashaykh? Um, I found it very beneficial for me because I was making, because when I had different shiukh, you make new mistakes. Like, for example, mm -hmm. With one sheikh, you're going to make a mistake here. And with another sheikh, you're going to make another mistake. For example, with Sheikh Shu'aib, I remember when I was reading to him in Warsh, 
I remember at the end of the verse, I always used to say Ya'maloon. I used to just make it a ghunna. It's meant to be Ya'maloon. So much so that he one time he came up to me and held my nose because I was doing it so much times. <laughs> and with Sheikh Ayyad, I remember reciting to him um, the scene, sorry, the sad, I think. You're, meant to, you're not meant to say sa, you're meant to say a bit more lighter, like sa, mm. a bit more lighter. So these, this is why having many teachers is beneficial. And of course, you need to develop relationship with your teachers. Very important as well. A lot of people have also asked regarding the pace of your muraja, regarding the pace of your revision. Could you give us a demonstration of how fast you're reciting? For example, with doing three juz, you're not reciting obviously. Yeah. yeah. Alhamdulillah. You're reciting like hadr. Hadr. Um, exactly. Could you give us a live example of oh, hadr, for example, wow. whatever you want? Alif Lam Mim. ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم ينفقون والذين يؤمنون بما أنزل إليك وما أنزل من قبلك وبالآخرة هم يقنون أولئك على هدى من ربهم وأولئك هم المفلحون. So that that is reciting at that pace you can recite three juz in yeah in one hour, in one hour. easy and and you know, one thing I also fall into, I no. don't know if many people fall into this, but when you start revising, let's say you're doing your three years or five years a day, no. when you start revising, it's easy for you to get caught up in the beauty of the Quran and start reciting slowly with, the, with mm. the, trying to make a melodious, sort of a melodious tone. Do you have a separate portion of the Quran that you recite outside of your width, outside of your daily recital? Where you just really just enjoy the the Quran and the verses, or is that just purely from salah? Or? For me, when whenever I'm just walking around, I recite random verses. They just come to my head, mm-hmm. and I just carry on. And for example, I remember Surah Al Rahman. Mm-hmm. I recite just the beginning portion of Surah Al Rahman because yeah. I just love reciting that, and many other surahs as well. Like Inna Hada Al Quran Ayyadi Lil Lati Awqam. Such a nice portion to recite from. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So going off that, what would you say in regards to your success with memorizing in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are your three three most significant things that played a factor in you succeeding? So the three factors um, probably intention, having a correct intention, mm. having a strict timetable and consistency. Mm. So intention, of course, you have to have your reciting for the sake of Allah Jalla wa ala and his sake only. Because if you recite for the sake of, I don't know, I want to impress my parents, I want to impress so and so, you'll actually feel demotivated. It will actually demotivate you. Because there could be a time when you're memorizing and you might think, and you may be struggling on verse, for example, and you may think, oh, my dad might not be happy with me, my mom might not be happy with me because I can't memorize it. But where you have to think, the ultimate thinking, you have to, it's only for Allah. Jalla wa ala. Think when Allah be happy with you. You're doing it for Allah's sake. And. The uh, second one is timetable, mm. having a strict timetable. Because if you don't have a strict timetable, you're going to be disorganized. You're, you'll spend time on uh, pointless things. You'll have you'll find it hard to fit the Quran into that mm. time. So we have to you have to plan your time. You have to make sure you can fit Quran uh, within that. You have to have a structured timetable. Mm. And the third one is consistency, which is probably the most important one. Because if you are not consistent. You will st- slowly start to forget. You will not be able to maintain your hifz. Um, there is a hadith narrated by Bukhari from Ibn Umar radiallahu an that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "The likeness of the one who uh, the likeness of the one who memorizes the Quran is that of, of the owner of a hobble camel. If he tends to it regularly, he will keep it, and if he uh, lets it go, he will lose it." That is how like memory you can just go like that. Mm-hmm. That's why every day you should be reciting yeah. Quran. We should not we should not we should not let a day go go past and not reciting the Quran. We should make the Quran the main core of our lives. Revolve our life around the Quran. Yeah. Yeah. So on that note, Inshallah, could we request a recitation from yourself? Inshallah. Sure. <coughs> Alhamdulillah. 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 أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد 
واتقوا الله واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون ولا تكونوا كالذين نسوا الله فأنساهم أنفسهم أولئك هم الفاسقون لا يستوي أصحاب النار وأصحاب الجنة أصحاب الجنة هم الفائزون لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشعا لرأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله وتلك الأمثال نضربها للناس لعلهم يتفكرون هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو عالم الغيب والشهادة هو الرحمن الرحيم هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله عما يشركون هو الله هو الله الخالق البارئ المصور له الأسماء الحسنى له الأسماء الحسنى يسبح له ما في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم صدق الله العظيم. How have you, in terms of your sort of the sites that you listen to, have you noticed a change as you've been going up in in, in how in what you incline to in terms of what you like listening to? And mm, I think uh, currently I've I've listened to I haven't listened to Sheikh Yasser Dusri as much, but. I've listened to other Qurra, mm. like Minsha, uh, Mujawad, for example, like Minshawi, Sheikh Minshawi, very unique yeah. voice, Sheikh Minshawi, Sheikh Hussari, Sheikh, you know, Sheikh Mustafa Ismail, yeah. all these Qurra. Yeah. But of course, Sheikh Dusari will always remain like, my favorite. He will always. <laughs> Naam. What, what would you say your future aspirations with the Quran are? Um, my future aspiration with the Quran is that I want to learn the meaning of the Quran. Because that's why I'm, stu- I'm currently studying Arabic And of course knowing the meaning of the Quran um, Makes you closer to the creator of Allah Jalla wa'ala Because knowing the meaning Helps you understand the harsh reality of Jahannam mm. And the beauty of Jannah for mm. example no. And you uh, knowing the meaning Helps you understand the commands of Allah Jalla wa'ala What he's telling us to do no. And a second aspiration A second thing that I want to accomplish In the future with the Quran is that of course I want to learn the tenth qira'ah inshallah. Inshallah. I think in a few months I'm gonna start, you know, Ashara qira'ah. There's a course which is just uh, you focus on the tenth qira'ah with Sheikh Shaib, inshallah. Inshallah. And a third thing that I want to accomplish is, Alhamdulillah, I've started to teach the Quran. I want to teach it further because the hadith Khairukum, Man Ta'alam al Quran, the famous hadith, the best of you is the one that learns the Quran and teaches it. And for more longer term aspirations is that I want to study Islam deeper For example, I want to study the tafsir of the Quran Like fiqh and hadith That is my future aspirations later in life insha'Allah in- Having uh, also Allah Barak, you've got a younger brother mashallah, Who memorized, how did you How did you sort of, did you Were you there when he was memorizing And did you support him in any way, help him out with his memorization? It was primarily my father, Allah. My father. The same techniques he employed on me it's passed on to my brother. It's passed on to my brother.
and and like you said, the main techniques were specifically. Obviously, you mentioned support and stuff. What would you say were like were the main techniques that he done apart from yeah, he used to test you and stuff like that? And the main technique my father employed on me is that it's it's uh, quite a, it's a complex technique. Mm. It's like sometimes it it gets confusing. So what I, for example, just one. Mm. So I had to solidify that first. Make it perfect in order for this technique to work. Mm. So this technique was myself reciting to my father just one. So if this was just one and an extra five pages, so extra five pages. Yeah. So once I had this completed, day one would be ticked off, mm. and we'd move on to day two, and day two would be me uh, revising what I did in just uh, day one. Sorry. Mm. So just one and the five pages or twenty five pages I'll give to my father for day two and revise an extra set of f- five pages. And day three was everything I gave on day two. Day four, everything on day three. So by the end of the week, I was revising almost two and a half jaws. And psycholo- and at young age, psychologically, this was good for me. I found it uh, helpful because now I'm thinking I can revise the jaws on my own. I don't have to give it to my father every time. I can just recite, revise it on my own. And mm. Alhamdulillah, I'm fine with that. Mm. And and the next weeks, we have just carried on this technique. And Alhamdulillah, I managed, uh, that's how I finished my revision of the Qur'an, just using this technique. Allah, to the quick five hand, inshaAllah ta'ala. Quick questions, quick questions, let's go. Favourite ayah currently. قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Say, O oh servants of Allah, do not act reckless, do not act recklessly against themselves. Not, yeah, Is, those who transgress. Those who transgress them against themselves, um, do, not despair. do not despair in the mercy of your Lord. No, so Favourite recital. Sheikh Yasri, Sheikh Yasri al Dosari. And of course, I listen to various Qurra, Sheikh Muhammad Ayyub, Sheikh Mahir al Ma'iqali, Sheikh Juhani, Sheikh Mujawad reciters as well. Could you give us an imitation of Sheikh Yasri al Dosari? Okay. Wasiqa al Ladina at Taqa Rabbahum ila al Jannati Zumara. Hatta Ida Jau. فتحت أبوابها وقال لهم وقال لهم خزنتها سلام عليكم طبتم فادخلوها خالدين وقالوا الحمد لله وقالوا الحمد لله الذي صدقنا وعده وأورثنا الأرض وأورثنا الأرض نتبوأ من الجنة حيث نشاء فنعم أجر العاملين وترى الملائكة حافين من حول العرش يسبحون بحمد ربهم وقضي بينهم بالحق وقيل الحمد لله رب العالمين Sheikh Muhammad Ayyub وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّ جِعَلْ هَذَا الْبَلَدَ آمِنًا وَاجْنُبْنِي وَبَنِيَ أَن نَعْبُدَ الْأَصْنَامِ رَبِّ إِنَّهُنَّ أَضْلَلْنَ كَثِيرًا مِّنَ النَّاسِ فَمَنْ تَبِعَنِي فَإِنَّهُ مِنِّي وَمَنْ عَصَانِي فَإِنَّكَ غَفُورٌ رَّحِيمٌ رَبَّنَا إِنِّي أَسْكَنْتُ مِنْ ذُرِّيَّتِي بِوَادٍ غَيْرِ ذِي زَرْعٍ بِوَادٍ غَيْرِ ذِي زَرْعٍ عِنْدَ بَيْتِكَ الْمُحَرَّمِ رَبَّنَا لِيُقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ رَبَّنَا لِيُقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ فَاجْعَلْ أَفْئِدَةً مِنَ النَّاسِ تَهْوِي إِلَيْهِمْ تَهْوِي إِلَيْهِمْ وَارْزُقْهُمْ مِنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَشْكُرُونَ رَبَّنَا إِنَّكَ تَعْلَمُ مَا نُخْفِي وَمَا نُعْلِنْ وما يخفى على الله من شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء الحمد لله الذي وهب لي على الكبر إسماعيل وإسحاق إن ربي لسميع الدعاء 
رب جعلني مقيم الصلاة ومن ذريتي ربنا وتقبل دعاء ربنا اغفر لي ولوالدي وللمؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب Who is sorry what is your favorite surah Surah Ar-Rahman Surah Ar-Rahman is it's a surah in which Allah Jalla wa'ala explains and he describes all the all the favors and bounties he has blessed us with is prominent in the verse fa bi ayyi ala'i rabbikum atukadhiman which are the favors of your lord do you deny Allah Jalla wa'ala blessed us with you know fresh air eyes yeah. to see with ears to hear with and this also links back to la taqnatu min rahmatillah doesn't yeah. it the mercy of Allah Jalla wa'ala he will show your mercy so choose one yeah. what would show you say, his mercy so what would you say is the most or the surah that Imam found the most challenging? As I mentioned earlier in the podcast, Surah Al-A'raf, mm-hmm. Surah Al-A'raf, and Surah Al-Shu'ara. Mm-hmm. Surah Al-Shu'ara. Yeah, trust me. It was just the... Because it was like Safat, mm-hmm. short verse as well. Yeah. And of and course the Mutashabihat. Like, you don't know, is it, is it Atutrakuna fi ma ha huna aminin, or is it Atabnuna fi liri'in ayat al-ta'abadu? Because of course, after, before, it's always Fattaku Allah wa ati'un, wa ma asalukum alayhi min ajr, in ajr ya illa ala arubu al-alamin. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. so th- I think that's probably uh, like one of the most challenging yeah. surahs for most people. Yeah. Surah al-Shu'ara and... Surah al-Shu'ara and Surah al-A'raf. And Surah al-A'raf. Yeah, those are the two. Yeah, I agree with that. So we just want mutashabihat. Yeah, yeah. How do, how do you overcome mutashabihat? Just I I go over them a lot. Mm. When, for example, tarawi revision. For when I'm revising for tarawi and I have verses which contain mutashabihat, I just look over the verse. I just revise it to myself a few times. قال yeah. إسقال الملأ من قوم فرعون سورة العراف قال الملأ من قوم فرعون إن هذا لا سحر عليم يريد أن يخرجكم من أرضكم فماذا تأمرون إن سورة الشعراء بسحره. Favorite way of yours. Warsh and Nafi. Warsh and Nafi. Such an amazing way to recite. Yeah. Such is flowing. Of course, when you when you recite in Tawassut uh, as well. Tawassut? Yeah. In Four Haraka. I just yeah. love it. Yeah. It's so f- nice as well. Yeah. Yeah. Just hearing Sheikh Abdul Rashid Sufi, Sheikh Masarawi, he came to. Sheikh Masarawi actually came to Dar Lumma. He led Tarawi on this the third Ramadan. night, this Ramadan, and read in Warsh and Nafi throughout. Amazing. Mm. Amazing. And what was so amazing about that night? Sheikh Masarawi asked uh, Sheikh Ashik Rahman what she'd recite. And Sheikh Ashik Rahman said, Laysa alayka wa dam. Then Sheikh Masarawi said, Tayyib. Then this one. That's amazing. Because yeah. apparently he hasn't touched, he hasn't gone over the Quran for 50 years. Open Musa. Wow. 50 years. Serious? I, f- I think so. so it's long. Because I think he used to proofread the Quran. Yeah, proofread yeah, the Quran. He has the signatures of yeah. I'm not surprised, man. And and it's like if you look at these giants, their women is like minimum four and a half, yeah. five years a day. Like they finish the Quran uh, every week. Yeah, and even Sheikh Jamal, he actually mentioned that Sheikh Abdul Rashid Sufi's father, <laughs> father it was ten ajza a day. A day yeah. Allah. Mullah preserved these shuyukh. Allah Jalla wa'ala bless us with these amazing shuyukh to preserve our deen. Yeah. Favorite hadith of yours? Favorite hadith: Iqra wa rtaqi, rattil kama kunta turattil. في الدنيا فإن منزلك عند آخري no. آية تقرأها uh, whoever sorry um, read and rise and read and rise and recite in the slow paced manner as you recited in this world for indeed your rank shall be de- determined by the last verse you recite imagine like have you ever had the thought imagine you get to Surah Al-Nas Imagine that, that. Imagine your rank in Jannah, yeah. and we ask Allah Jalla wa Ala to make us from amongst those people. I mean, I mean, imagine that. Imagine the Jannah to the highest rank yeah. in Jannah. Such an amazing hadith. Iqra wa rtaqi. Read and rise. Favorite dua. Allahumma musarrif al qulub, sarrif qulubuna ala dinik. Oh Allah, change of hearts, direct our hearts to your obedience. This dua is personal. It's like a personal dua. Yeah. It's you and Allah Jalla wa Ala, because you don't know someone's heart. Could be like hot stone, yeah. stone, and once they are, once they direct their hearts to Allah Jalla wa'ala, they will feel the joy in this world, because Allah Jalla wa'ala, He has power over everything, and that's why we should make this dua for Allah Jalla wa'ala. He's the one He controls our hearts. He controls our hearts, and that's why such an amazing dua. Favorite story from the stories of the Anbiya? Prophet Yunus alayhi salam. Mm-hmm. Amazing story. Yeah. It, it actually shows Allah's mercy again, doesn't it? 
all links to the mercy of Allah Jalla wa'ala. When he was in the whale, he wasn't ungrateful. What he did, he went into sujood and recited the dua, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al Oh Allah, you are the Lord of the world. You are pure, are you? And indeed, I am of the, amongst the wrongdoers. Subhanallah. And here it shows that, his story shows that if you are merciful, if you are sincere in your repentance, then Allah Jalla wa'ala will shower his mercy upon you. Mm. And this also, as when I mentioned earlier, if you're in a difficult situation, that's when Allah will show his mercy. And as you can see, Yunus alayhi salam, he was stuck in a whale, and Allah showered his mercy. Showered his mercy and spread, and Yunus alayhi salam was able to spread da'wah. On the back of that, then, inshaAllah ta'ala, what story from the Sahaba inspires you the most? The story that inspires me the most is the story of Mus'ab ibn Umar. Amazing story, amazing story. He was admired, as you know, he was admired by many. He was so modest in his. Uh, he used to dress in such a nice way. He used to have the most expensive fragrance at the time, and he wore uh, <coughs> Yemeni type of shoes, which were very expensive at the time. Yeah, shoes which were expensive at the time, and of course after he um, joined Islam, after he said the Shahada. No. Of course, his mother was angry mm-hmm. and imprisoned him to his house, imprisoned him to his own home. Mm-hmm. And Mus'ab ibn, ibn Umar, he wasn't frustrated. He didn't get like, angry, mm-hmm. agitated. All he did was just remain patient. Yeah. And his, this patience led him to become the first ambassador to go to, of Islam to go to Yathrib to invite people to the follow of Islam. No. Allah, it's amazing. Well, okay. And we know he passed away during the Battle of Uhud. Battle of oh. Uhud. And the Prophet ﷺ recited this verse when he passed away. Min al mu'minina rijalun sadaqu ma ahadullah alayhi. And among the believers are men who are true to the covenant they had with Allah Jalla wa'ala. And, while, and when he was reciting this, the Prophet ﷺ started crying. And this shows what a strong Sahaba Musa ibn, ibn Umar was. He faced trials and tribulations. And even though he faced these trials and tribulations, there was only one priority he had. La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. The only priority. Mm-hmm. Firm with his deen. Mm-hmm. That's best, um, best live recitation you've listened to? There have been a lot. A lot. But the best one, it has to be when I'm in Umrah, Sheikh Yasir al Dusari. Surah al Naba and Surah al Fajr. This was amazing because I was on the roof roof of the haram. Mm. Wow. Wow. Absolutely amazing. Actually have the recording. Actually have the recording on my phone, yeah. That's fine. Fajr like the Fajr Salah. For my experience, Imams was like different, yeah. Fajr Salah. Fajr Salah. I think Fajr Salah is like everyone's voice is different. Yeah. It's like Fajr Salah is different. Is that is that voice no. when you just woken up? When you woke up. Like. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know. Even but, yeah, yeah. You, even when you wake, you think, oh, my voice will be croaky, raspy. But even when when you start reciting, it's better than you do in midday. Yeah. There's something different about Fajr time. Yeah. yeah. And even during Ramadan, this Ramadan, uh, Sheikh Muhammad bin Sadira actually, I think Ihsan mentioned these two in his pre in the previous podcast. Episode Sheikh, 11. I think yeah, episode eleven. Yeah. Sheikh Sadira came Darul Umma for Tahajjud. Wow. Amazing. Sheikh Sadir's recitation is a powerful recitation. Just powerful. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. And I went to Kilban Masjid, Sheikh Ahmad Rajab. Uh, oh, yes. oh, amazing. No. Amazing. This Ramadan, this year, amazing recitals everywhere. Yeah, Allah. Allah. Final question. One of the final questions. If you could meet one Sheikh, who would it be? It has to be Imam Bukhari. Radiyallahu. Imam Bukhari. Because... He memorized the Quran at the age of six, I think. I believe he memorized the Quran at the age of six, I believe, at a very young age. And by the age of 16, I believe he memorized every single hadith at that time. Every single hadith at that time. And of course, he narrated one of the most authentic, one authentic hadith from Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He's the narrator. So Imam Bukhari is an imam that I would like to meet from the past. Allah. It's amazing when you think about it, like, Imams and true from many years ago, they're yeah. still relevant now, mm-hmm. they're still preserving our deen till now. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. Beautiful, amazing. Best country you've traveled to? I've been to Saudi Umrah about five times. 
that is probably the best country I've travelled to. But <coughs> off, apart from Umrah, on Morocco, mm. Egypt, I like those nice countries, nice cuisine as well. Yeah. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. So it's more sunny as well. Yeah. What What's your favorite cuisine and <laughs> Favorite cuisine. Do you know, Somalian cuisine mm-hmm. is nice. Al Kaf. Do you know Al Kaf? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Al Kaf. Amazing. You it's mean Al Kaf? Nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Amazing. It's nice, and it's in some nice bowl. Yeah. Say. So Everyone just eats yeah, from nice. one. And the yeah. rice is it tastes different. It's not any it's other it's rice. It's got the raisins in it. Banana. And the lamb, the banana. <laughs> There's banana in it. There's banana in the rice. Have you know? Have you tried it with the banana? La la. Okay. Oh, is the banana? Is it like the orange stuff in it? No no no. no. Oh, oh oh oh. I don't know. Actually, I've always been debating whether that's carrot or whether that's some sort of. I don't know what that orange vegetable is. I, I tend to avoid it. <laughs> to wrap up the quick fire round, inshallah ta'ala, with some, with some advice, based on your journey though, speaking about, for those who are just beginning to memorize the, the Qur'an, where, where would you say to begin memorizing from? And would you say like, when you start memorizing from the front of the Qur'an, go to the back eventually? or? So my advice for... The uh, brothers and sisters that are willing to embark on this Quran journey is that from the back you should memorize the last three juz, just twenty nine, just twenty eight, just twenty, just thirty, just twenty nine, just twenty eight. Sorry, and thereafter you can move on to juz one. Because if you memorize it from the back, you'll, you'll be quicker. You'll memorize those three juz. Surely it'll take about maybe a few months, close to a year, and what that's why I did. So I started just 30, just 29, and I went to Surah Baqarah. Mm. But I think some may recommend just doing it from the back mm. because it's more easier, because the verse is more shorter and longer. Yeah. But I'd actually, but it's better to do short than um, the longer verses because you know what you're going to get into, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And the Quran, it will either testify against you or speak for you on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Iqra'u Al-Quran fa'innahu ya'ti Yawm Al-Qiyamah ya shifi'a li ashabi. Recite the Quran as it will become a witness for you on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And we ask Allah to make us of those who, whom the Quran speaks for on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Ameen, ameen, ameen. When you finished memorizing the Quran, how happy were you and how, how happy was you and how happy were your parents? Allahi, it was such an amazing feeling. It was even more amazing because I actually finished my last verse around the Kaaba while doing tawaf around the Kaaba. Amazing. To him belongs the majesty of the heavens and the earth, and he's the all wise. Such an amazing feeling. And I remember just remembering all these years, just memorizing the Quran. There was a point in my life when I couldn't memorize anything at all. I wasn't committed, I was sometimes lazy. And now, Alhamdulillah, it's worth it. It's all worth it in the end. That verse that you recited, no. the meaning of it, the place you were yeah. walking. Just praising Allah Jalla wa'ala, in front of his house as well. Did you time it so you you finished memorizing around the Yeah, I remember my, when I, actually it was in London when I was in the verse wa idha qila inna wa'adullah yaq. So my dad was like, Don't recite the verse, we're gonna go umrah in the, uh, I think the week after and just recite it there. Wow. It was amazing. And that yeah. was my ultimate dream. I remember when I was young, I was like I was saying to my father, I want to Finish my last verses in Umrah while I'm doing Tawaf. Alhamdulillah, I was able to fulfill that dream. So your parents really were involved in your journey? On every step of the way. Every step of the way. I had a good balance as well between my education and Quran. Because yeah. my mom focused on my education and my dad f- was more focused on my Hifz. So any issues I had regarding my secular studies, my mom would provide for, for example, tuition tutors. So it was, there was a good balance. Yeah. It wasn't... Uh, it wasn't like a mess. Mm. It's a good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you, as in, you were on track with your academics yeah. and everything yeah. like that. That's amazing. So it's that balance of like your parents providing that support yeah. for both angles, mm. the Quran, and also making sure you got the choices yeah. and stuff like that. That's, that's amazing. And when you finish, how were you? How was your? What was your parents' reaction like? <laughs> you memorize. Of course, they were happy as well because after all these years, all these sacrifices. Yeah. My dad, I mean, he sacrificed a lot. A lot of time for me. Yeah. I remember he was happy as well. He, of course, my graduation ceremony was such an amazing day. Amazing day. December of 2015, so the day I graduated. Such a happy moment. Lovely memory. Lovely memory to relive. Yeah. 
in terms of speaking about like what are some of the blessings the Quran has brought you, and what what are some of like the fond sort of fun memories that you remember about enjoying your journey with the Quran? I think every moment with the Quran is fun. Mm. Like every time, every time I was reciting the Quran, it was I was happy. Even though, even when I finished the, uh, you know when I mentioned I was stuck on long verses. Yeah. When I finished them, the happiness I felt. Uh, I finally finished it. I was sometimes I was stuck on the verses for like hours. And when I finished, I was ah, fuck, I can finally move on to the next verse. Yeah. I can carry on. Yeah. So, yeah, every moment with the Quran is fun. There should never be a time where you find bored. You find the Quran not being fun. We always have to recite fun. That comes with intention as well. Yeah. Your attention has to be for, has to be for Allah Jalla wa ala. And if your intention is correct, you'll find it enjoyable. Yeah. You find the Quran enjoyable. Mm. May Allah grant you success in that. I mean, I mean, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this podcast a form of sadaqah journey I mean, for yourself. And it's been an honor to be here. It's an amazing pod- initiative. May Allah Jalla wa ala place his barakah towards the I mean. his podcast and allow it to thrive. I mean, I mean, I mean. And obviously, you, you know many of the guests that have been before. <coughs> yeah. Sheikh Ihsan, uh, you know Anas, right? Qari Anas. You know Qari Anas, Mashallah. Qari Subhan, all these, Qari Abrasham, all amazing Qurra, yeah. amazing Qurra. Yeah. Inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from you and Ameen. bless you for coming down. And uh, inshallah ta'ala, we look forward to definitely having you on in the future inshallah. inshallah. And uh, perhaps even on your brother as well inshallah. Yeah, inshallah. Yeah, story, inshallah ta'ala. Um, but with that, with that inshallah ta'ala, jazakumullah khair for those who listened in today. Um, please, we do remind inshallah ta'ala for those who enjoyed the episode. Obviously, our, and the Hif States initiative is very early in its early stages. So as we mentioned at the beginning, we've only been doing it for about two months or so inshallah ta'ala so do support the channel by sharing the video do support the channel by liking do support the channel inshallah by writing a comment um, speaking about where you are in your journey with the Quran speaking about what inspired you the most during this episode and also if you have any suggestions about future episodes what you'd like to see what advice you'd like to hear what tips you'd like to hear about inshallah then you can let us know down in the comment section down below Oh, <laughs>